we've got to cut, but we've got to cut to invest. We've got to begin to invest in those things that are going to set our economy on a different path forward. Uh, substantial sustained investments in advanced research and development, basic science. We do it to some extent in health, obviously. We do it to defense. We have not invested in clean energy R&D to the extent that we need to do to crack the code on clean energy and low carbon. Uh, we need to invest in advanced manufacturing. Once we invest in ba basic science, we need to be much better about commercializing innovation and doing tech transfer so we don't just have the ideas in the United States. We begin to prototype products and begin, frankly, to produce and deploy and manufacture more of what we invent. And finally, we need to invent, uh, invest in next generation infrastructure, transportation and energy, and in the human capital that we need um, to set off this new generation of growth. So we need to cut to invest. I was on this panel in Palo Alto the other day uh, with uh, former Secretary of State George Schultz. Uh, his recommendation, which sounded eminently um, feasible or, or intelligent, maybe not politically feasible, was end all the tax subsidies for every kind of energy source that we have, whether it's oil, whether it's coal, whether it's nuclear, whether it's wind, whether it's solar, and shift a good portion of that funding into the kind of advanced R&D that we need. Simpson Bowles had an interesting recommendation, I thought, about a cut and invest committee so that as we begin to scale back the federal government, we still retain these core investments. So first thing that I think states and locals are focusing on cut to invest. Second is cut and reform. So you mentioned the cuts that have already happened. I was chief of staff at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. I spent a period of time there at the beginning of the Obama administration. Last fiscal year, the Community Development Block Grant was cut $900 million. Uh, this fiscal year, just the, the package that was just um, uh, approved the other day, uh, HUD, DOT, Ag, Commerce, um, CDBG was cut another $200 million. The home program was cut $600 million. The public housing program was cut $750 million, right? The cuts are already happening. What's not happening is the reforms that need to occur in these highly prescriptive, highly bureaucratic, highly top-down programs so that you can do more with less. It's not enough to cut that, and, and just think it's all going to be fine or presume that these programs are functioning so effectively and efficiently. They're not. These are legacy programs that haven't been reformed for quite some period. I think Simpson Bowles talked about 44 job training programs across multiple agencies, 105 separate programs on STEM and science and engineering. The federal government needs to radically get its act together on the fiscal side and the programmatic side. Last point. Um, about what I think the states and locals want to hear, and I've got a recommendation maybe how to do this, cut and devolve. Alice wrote a book 20 years ago called Reviving the American Dream. If anyone does anything when they leave this place, go to the Brookings bookstore <laughs> and buy this book. <laughs> it is as relevant today, it is more relevant today in some respects than it was 20 years ago. And what it basically said or says is we need a new division of responsibilities between the national government and the state and local governments for the 21st century. The states, uh, the federal government needs to do less and needs to do it well. The states and their cities and metros really need to take on the productivity agenda and the income enhancing agenda um, and really have prime responsibility for some of the economic growth that needs to happen because it's so different across the country.